I came here today because I wanted to ask you one question. Do you think this image is dangerous? This is a 60s ad about a deodorant saying that this girl can have a lot of beautiful physical attributes, but they just won't do if she doesn't smell good as well. Do you think it's dangerous? What if I told you that it can harm people? What if I told you that it can actually help to kill people? What would you do? I mean, it seems harmless, right? Well, I'm sorry to tell you that, but it does actually help to harm people, and I'm going to prove you why. I wanted to invite you today to think about how women are represented in advertisements. I've been thinking about it after I've seen some numbers in Brazil that saying that 65% of women don't feel represented by ads. And that's weird because in the same country, other researchers say that 80% of the buying decisions are made by women. I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? Why would brands would do advertisements that their main customers wouldn't like? And they saw that it wasn't happening all in Brazil, but United States, friends, and many other places in the world. And that intrigued me. That made me wonder what's happening. Where's that gap? So I started to study more about ads and read and learn and read about them. And it comes out that they have some kind of patterns, some kind of elements that continuously repeat themselves, which I organize in five components that help us to understand why women don't feel represented. And I wanted to share them with you today. So it all starts with women that we see on ads are often not real. And I'm not only saying about Photoshop. We all know that with it, we can change everything about them, their hair, their sizes and shapes, even the color of their nails. But I'm saying that women are so Photoshopped, their images are so manipulated that they actually turn themselves into different persons. They're so forced to look perfect in whatever perfect might mean, that they actually turn themselves into third person, something else. And you know what? Uh, women are forced and told to be like them all the time, but that them doesn't actually exist. I brought an example about a worldwide known model that got her image so manipulated that she actually had her head bigger than her hips, which is anatomically impossible. And right next to it is how she actually looked like that time. Quite different, huh? She actually got fired by the brand because she looked too fat. So... And uh, they are forced to look like that because apparently they have to meet some beauty patterns, which you can call beauty stereotypes, which leads me to the second component. And we don't have only stereotypes, only saying women how they look like, but how they should, uh, who they should be and what they should or shouldn't do. And stereotypes are all over it. And uh, we have stereotypes. Of, uh, and we can grab some examples over day by day. So for sure, you, you'll be able to relate it. If I say the beautiful girlfriend, or the loving mom, or the efficient housewife that will know how to solve any problem in your house, or even the caring grandma, those are all stereotypes. And stereotypes might be good because they uh, help us to quickly identify some profiles. But at the same time, they put people into those little boxes. And when we take them too seriously, we don't allow people to go out of those boxes to explore their own uniquenesses and complexities and diversities. And women are forced into those boxes every day by brands. I brought an example here about a cleaning product ad saying that on Mother's Day, we should remind them how it is to be go back to the job that really matters. There you go. You have the efficient housewife. And look, she's actually training the next generation. Her daughter's right next with her. It's a combo. We have the loving mom as well. And the funny thing about the stereotypes is even though they were made with women, they don't seem to be built for them, but for somebody else. Women are only included in stories when they help to please somebody else's needs and desires, which leads me to the third component. Women are not the protagonists of their own stories. We can go back to the same examples I shared. The beautiful girlfriend, the loving mom, the efficient housewife, or the caring grandma. You see? They're only there because they're somebody else's something. Brands are not saying, hey, you, woman, I want to talk to you. What do you want? I want to discover what you want. No, they're saying, hey, I know how you can make others happy, and I'm an instrument for that. Want to buy me? And, you know, we can get back to the same example again, the cleaning app product. On Mother's Day, let's remind them about the job that really matters. I'm not a mom, but I think I can guess that she wanted to do something else rather than cleaning her house on Mother's Day, right? 
And sometimes it gets so much strong that they actually turn themselves. They are literally offered as products, which leads me to the fourth component. Women are objectified. They have brands and packagings all over their bodies, and it gives us a, sense, a feeling that we can just grab them from a shelter, buy them, use them however we want to, and then just throw them away. And that's so dangerous, because when we turn a person into an object, we don't see them anymore as human beings, and that might help us to forget that the person actually has human rights. And it gets even worse, more evident, when we focus only on their parts of their bodies. And uh, we can see sometimes even the head is taken off. And when you lose the connection with the face, you lose the connection with their identities and personalities. I brought a curious example from Brazil. So this is a beer campaign <laughs> saying that if the guy that invented the beer had also invented skirts, skirts would look like that. Obviously, we don't need to see her face, right? The only thing that matters there is her backer attributes, I guess. And uh, maybe you'd like to see what it would be like for curtains and fitting rooms. They would look like that. Or even censorship tags. Come on. The last one for me is still the worst one. So if the guy that invented beer had also invented beach soccer, it would look like that. A guy chasing a naked woman in the middle of the beach. Doesn't that give you a feeling that that guy can just grab her if she was something? And you know what? This can get even more dangerous. This can lead to the five component when women are literally sexually harassed or physically abused on ads. And this one specifically is so hard to talk about because it's so visual. It's so straight to the point. I'm saying that women appear with purple eyes and blood all over their bodies, or even as dead bodies in the middle of the street. Who does that? But that actually happens, and I'm not talking about any random brand. I'm talking about international, powerful brand that has the power to inspire so, so many people. This is an, an advertisement that had to be banned because it was associating with something that we can call a gang rape. Yeah, and you might be thinking, hey, Natalia, okay, you brought some examples from Brazil, maybe others from the United States. Mm, I don't know, maybe they're a bit just too Western, maybe they don't happen here like that. Well, then I'd ask you back, are you sure? This is an advertisement that just went through one of the main streets in Armenia about an Armenian brand of cognac. A good example of objectification, right? Yeah, and you know what? Our neighbors can be very creative in using those five components, especially the Russian. Oh my God, they're very clever in that. And you know what? Women are getting tired. And you know what they're doing? They're finally saying no. They don't want to take it anymore. They don't want to be so much stereotype and Photoshop. For example, 30,000 online petitioners made Victoria's Secret take off an international campaign, putting women together, saying that they had the perfect body. But they were all similar models with slim bodies. That doesn't represent women anymore. They want real beauty and diversity. They also want to be the protagonist of their own stories. They want brands that communicate straight to them. Hey, what you want? I want to please you. They don't want to be objectified anymore. They want respect for their bodies and identities. And last but not least, they for sure won't tolerate those kind of abusive communications. And you know why they're saying no? Well, this, dear audience, is the most important part of this whole speech. They're saying no because they know that advertisements don't affect only the imaginary world. They're saying no because they know that it affects the real world as well. Yeah, what? You're not surprised. I didn't think it would be, because we all know that advertisements can help to shape behaviors in real life. That's what we're made for. Because I mean, guys in the audience today, this is for you. What if that girl was somebody you knew in your family? What if it was your sister? What if it was your mom? What if it was your daughter? It is for sure someone else's daughter. How do you feel about men fantasizing to gang rape a girl that could be your daughter? How does that make you feel that a brand is actually promoting, encouraging men to get, fantasize about gang raping a, a girl that could be your daughter? Honestly, how does that make you feel? Girls in the audience today, it could be you. 
And you know what? I keep saying those things. It could be you, it could be your daughter, but to be honest, I don't like it. They're going to call your attention, but I don't like it at all, because it could be a complete stranger. It could be a total unknown person that we would still owe him or her respect, because we're all humans and we all have human rights. And respecting human rights, among others, is what makes us civilized. And you know, since we're talking about real life, do you want to know what's happening right now to real women in Armenia? I'm going to show you. Women, almost two-thirds of them, have already suffered from domestic violence. That's huge. That's a terrible benchmark. Domestic violence includes physical, sexual, and psychological violence. They are receiving 30% less salaries than men for the exact same job. And you know what? They're receiving less salaries even though they're more educated because, yes, in Armenia, women have more enrollment rates in the primary, secondary, and tertiary education institutions. Unfortunately, they are not that well represented politically. They, all, they are only composed 11% of the parliament and ministries. And the saddest part is still to come. Unfortunately, we are the second worst sex ratio in the world, losing only China. That means that for every 100 men, we have only 88 women. And that doesn't happen naturally. That means it happens because of sex-selective abortion, and it means that we're killing our female babies. Because apparently they don't work the same as boys do here. Because they will grow up and they won't receive the same salaries, and they won't have the freedom to do whatever they want to do. So all that together, among other indicators, builds what we call gender inequality. There you go. There's that gap I was looking for. That gap that says that it's okay for women to feel uncomfortable and to be disrespected. And you want to know what women are saying about it in real life as well? They're also saying no. We're exhausted. We don't want to take it anymore. And we have so many good examples of women fighting against it. For example, what just happened here in Armenia a few weeks ago, when people went to the streets to say no to domestic violence, remembering all the people that got killed by it. Or maybe some of you will remember when a famous actress from Hollywood had a speech about equal payment when she received an Oscar. Or another thing that just happened, six million women went to the streets of Poland to say no to a law change that could forbid abortion there because they want to be responsible for their own bodies and their own futures. And we have so many other examples, and we have more representatives, international campaigns. Or even in the local sphere, when two girls raised an awareness campaign about sexual harassment in the subway, or maybe Nobel Prize winners trying to take education for girls because apparently in some countries they're not allowed to study. Or even in the music industry. Yeah, with more lyrics and content that can empower girls and women through the world. And all of that together is because they are examples of brave and courageous women. They're, they're fighting for something that they believe that has to be changed in the world. And you might be not as passionate as they are in that fight, and that's okay, but I have to tell you something. If you by any moment felt just a bit uncomfortable with the numbers and images that I've brought, if you by just one second wondered why those things are like that and wouldn't it be better to be in another way, if you did that, then you already share something in common with them. If you did that, that means that you're at least just a bit aware of what's going on and maybe it's something you have to be changed. If you did that, you know that that might be connected to a bigger picture that can be manifested in so many places, including advertisements. So after all that, I just wanted to go back to the same question that brought me to you today. Do you think this image is dangerous? I can for sure see some elements there, some components. We have some stereotypes of what it would be like to have a beautiful eye or teeth or uh, hair. But the most particular thing of all is concentrated in one word. She could have all that, but it would all be wasted if she doesn't smell good as well. Wasted or who? I mean, the ad is not saying, hey, I want to sell you deodorants because I want you to feel better about yourself and be happy. No, the, deodorant, the, the ad is saying, hey, you better buy my deodorant, otherwise others won't like you, your smell. What's that? Is she an object? Is she there just to please somebody else? She's for sure not the protagonist of that story. So I just wanted to ask you once more, <laughs> do you think it's dangerous? Because if now you're thinking twice before answering no, 
well, then you already got the message I came here to share. If you now think that you might look through advertisements in a different perspective and try to question what brands are really trying to tell us with those messages, if you now feel that this is helpful for you to uh, understand that you're a more conscious consumer, well, then we already had a huge step to gain. Thank you very much.